What's up, everybody? What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Gonna, gonna Cause an, an argument? argument? My name is Angel Akita Moore Tanksley, also known as That Chick Angel. I'm one of your hosts, and I am joined by my husband and other hosts. <laughs> I'm Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Marcus <laughs> on the Gram, a.k.a. Tank, a.k.a. owner and CEO of Man Shit. Tell them about the podcast while I get my other baby. Yeah, see, she would already have him in here, but yeah, she got puppies to do. Anyway, y'all, this podcast is about any and everything. We talk about current events. We talk about family. We talk about black love. We talk about anything we want to, anything y'all want to, family. We... Thank y'all for joining in with us. Um, me and Angel are a couple, married couple that has been married for 13 years. Um, and we offer advice. We take advice. We talk about our experiences, family, parents, siblings, any and everything. We talk about our loud ass co-host that's about to come in here, uh, the slum lord. He likes to make a lot of noise. That's what we do, y'all. So we want to thank y'all for joining us. As soon as Angel gets back. Did you tell them who we are sponsored by this episode? We babe? are sponsored, y'all. Thank you so much for our sponsors. We are sponsored by BetterHelp. We are sponsored by Every Plate and Usual Wines. We want to thank them for sponsoring this podcast. We greatly appreciate it. We hope that you all support them because they support us and help us make this happen. And we want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon members who are watching this live. Woo! What's happening, Patreon? Call them our immediate family so they got to see us fumble. With all of our technical difficulties prior to us beginning, they saw my puppy, my new puppy, Lottie Dottie, who quickly got replaced by our baby, my youngest son, Amar, our youngest son, who we also lovingly call the Slumlord, who just woke up from his nap and is now using me like a water fountain. Amen and amen. So we thank the Lord for our Patreon members. We start off every episode with a segment we like to call In My Feelings. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're in your feelings, husband. So I I'm would good. love. Oh, you you good? Yeah. Well, tell me what's got you in your feelings at One any point. One thing that's scraping my rims right now is this heat. Oh. This tell heat. This, tell it's, them it's about hot. it. It's hot people today, don't know. Some people might know not know where we live. Y'all, we in we in Southern California, and in our area, it got up to about one fourteen today. Um, it's still hot right now. It's late at night right now, and it's uh, still hot. It's still in the high nineties. It it's so uncomfortable. Um, yes, yes, it yeah. is. It is very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, and uh, we setting up this podcast and uh, Angel's uh, organizational. Uh, Critiques, not critiques, styles. I didn't. I was gonna say I didn't critique anything. Yeah, you her did. style. I ain't critique nothing. Her style of organization is little. Uh, it just is is magnified for me because I am hot. <laughs> it's hot see, right let now. me tell y'all. I had the Patreon camera set up. I had the camera that will be the footage that people that our editor will edit from set up. The only problem was that the um, audio mic battery went dead. That was my fault. And Marcus called himself going to get the battery to change it out and knock down all, the entire setup. And then begin to undo my setup. He was like, I didn't yeah. think you were set up. I thought this stuff was just in there. It don't look set up. Well, anybody who has been watching this knows that I set up all the things. All the times. You do. You do. So, you don't but have... I, I tried my best to put everything back the way it was. He... No, I, did, I just went ahead and did it. Yeah, you did. I said I tried. I didn't say I did it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why I was like, nah, he's already in his feelings. Don't you sit here. So, it was the heat... Yeah, that's part of it. That's part of it. Yeah. And then me not doing things the way you would like. That ain't the way I would like. This, it ain't got nothing to do with the way I would like. Yeah, I think it has everything uh, to do with it. Yeah. Not at all. Because it's getting done my way. <laughs> I don't think it is getting done your way I, either. I think people are hearing and seeing a podcast. No. All right, mate, it's getting done a way. Is this the way you would like for it to get done? If I'm having to do it, yep, because right, it's getting done. Well, I'm not about to sweat the small stuff. Is it small? Yeah. Apparently. Look at it. Yeah, it's small. Look at all this stuff. It's small. Y'all see y'all see Petty McPet and stuff? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Y'all, for one month, the month of October, I want you to do all of it. All right. Can you do it? I'm going to do it my way. 
Look, I'm not gonna stop you. Right. You gonna do it? Maybe. <laughs> I just want to know. If I don't, that's gonna be my way of doing it. <laughs> no, that's you not doing it. it. Hey, it's my way. That's not doing it. It's hey, gotta be. No, yeah, I want to no, be able to. It, it, I you be you consider it not doing it? No, no, <laughs> I won't do anything. I ain't gonna interrupt you not doing it. I'm gonna show up All like right. you. It's talent. And if I show up like me as talent, then we just going to be showing up together. <laughs> then you can't complain. <laughs> Do y'all see how that don't make no sense? You can't complain. Mm -hmm. I am actually making sure we have a podcast up every week. You do a great job. Okay, so that so you can't, you critiquing me. I'm not critiquing. I ain't tell you to fix nothing. What was the in my feelings? The in my feelings. I said about? the heat is magnifying the way everything looks to me. That's all I said. Nope. Now you take your analytical okay. things okay. that you be blowing up to you, be I mean, something that said, it ain't. Are you getting it done? I you, said yeah. And, and, you said, and I, said I don't are, think so. That's what I, you, you said. You said you're getting it done your way. And According to you, you don't like clutter. I Do don't. you not? I don't. All right. So you said you're getting it done your way. I was just saying you're not getting it done your way because your way wouldn't be cluttered either. But this is cluttered. Oh, you didn't say all of that. But well, you're now you know. explaining. Okay. This is why this is called is this going to cause an argument because I'm it is. sleepy, but his ass won't stay asleep. It is going to cause an argument. And it has already. But yes, that's that's what happened in the setting up and the putting, getting things set up is that we bumped heads, and I said, I'm just going to push through because I got things to do. Now, what got me in my feelings besides that was our food order earlier today. Y'all, I was ready to lose my whole entire mind on somebody's Uber Eats. Now, we as a family... It's always Uber Eats. It's, and sometimes it's um, Grubhub. No, Grubhub is, is user error. Grubhub pisses me off because it, it's not set up user friendly. No, it's user error. Let, let, Uber this Eats is and Postmates be now, constantly you, jacking up. Let orders. me tell you why we have this little argument about Uber Eats. All the other apps, once you decide what your um, what your tip is going to be, and you press submit, that is you completing the order. Grubhub has one extra step that I always forget. So at least twi two, maybe three times with Grubhub, I'm thinking that I have submitted my order. Two hours later, we sitting here like, where the food at? And I'm like, <laughs> God dang it. Where with Uber Eats, with DoorDash, with Postmates, as soon as you say, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tip this $10, this $7, this $5, this $15, and you press the, um, you put that in, and then you press submit for the order, it's over. Where with all these other ones, they are uh, with not all these other ones with um Grubhub. They're like now, now do you wanna you wanna order? I'm like God dang it! I didn't went through all this. Yes, bring my goddamn food. But anyways, back to Uber Eats. <sighs> Grubhub ain't never just randomly canceled no damn order on me. I ordered my food at three o'clock p.m. A nice amount of food. I spent some money on food. Had my had a hankering for seafood, and I was like, what we want seafood is not cheap. Ordered at 3 at 5. They sent me a message. Your order has been canceled. It, it, and it said, your food cannot be delivered. And I'm like, now what the hell are they talking about? It can't be delivered because we're here. With that extra step of grub hub, they ain't got it here. <laughs> I was like, what? Now this is on top of Wayfair was supposed to deliver desks. They said they delivered desks for the twins on Friday. Then desks got delivered in La Puente, California. That ain't that ain't by my house. I ain't never heard of La Quinta. La La Puenta, La, La Quinta. Quinta. One of the it ain't here. And they were like, Oh yeah, we'll just send you replacement. Well, can you get it to my house though? Or can you pick up the ones that you dropped off in La, La Quinta, La Puenta and drop it off here? So first you have that delivery error. Then error. La Puenta. Then I don't care where it is, it ain't here. And then I was just saying the pronunciation. I know what you meant. I don't care where it is. Yeah, yes, I'm going to say, I don't even care about the pronunciation now. And then Uber Eats waiting two hours to cancel my order was just the stupidest thing. And I called the restaurant and my food had been sitting there. And it wasn't as if they told me why Uber Eats. I had to ask, why my food ain't here? What didn't happen? 
they were like there were no drivers available. You all knew that crap 45 minutes in. I just think that is just the most like tr trashiest move ever. And uh, they need to answer for it. They do. Because they got me in all this psychological just anguish. But luckily, I can go to some place like BetterHelp to get out of this anguish. Which brings us to our first sponsors. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Y'all know. Food is the key to my happiness right now. Hmm? Um, or preventing you from achieving your goals. I know for me, actually, on a serious note, I was just saying to some friends that I'm trying to get out of my head. I feel mm -hmm. like I am making up problems or coming up with problems in my head that haven't already happened yet mm -hmm. when it comes to like me diving into ideas that I have. Oh, yeah, definitely. And like I'm like, oh, this that's, can't work. This that's like a have... new realization for you? No, I am. It's not a new realization. It's just that I'm now trying to fight it. Oh, I'm okay. actively trying to fight it, and it's harder than what some might think. Well, BetterHelp will assist your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can communicate in under 48 hours. Now, this is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done secu on, uh, securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. You get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that it makes it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Come on, that is a wonderful because sometimes you just can't get the help you need because you don't have your finances right, but BetterHelp is here to help you. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit the website and read the testimonials that are posted daily. You can go there at um, uh, www.betterhelp.com forward slash reviews. Visit betterhelp.com slash argue, however, that's better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an ex experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states special offer for the is this going to cause an argument listeners is get 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash argue argue so again we want to thank better help for sponsoring this podcast and also for offering such a great service especially in this day and age when there's a lot of stuff that people are worried about trying to figure out and sometimes you do you just need someone yeah who is professionally trained to help you work through things so but check them out call at, a, at the drop of a dime yeah check them out at betterhelp.com forward slash are you so what's got you feeling good uh, um let me see i got that printer set up uh my man shit stuff y'all's got me feeling good i uh for y'all that don't, for you all that don't know, I got a printer for my labels set up. Finally, I ordered that, got that set up. Angel helped me set that up, um, so that's gonna make the mailing process a lot easier. A lot easier, thank um, God. And I'm finally at the second step of making another large batch to get shipments shipped out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and just we got things we got coming down the pipeline. Um, getting my branding stuff over right now. I still got to finish up my logo stuff and get that sent over to the uh, creators for that. Yeah. But yeah, that's what's got me feeling good. Marcus is going through a firm to do all of his rebranding. We had tried to go through, like, I love Fiverr. I use Fiverr for a lot of things. However, um, I felt like with Marcus's brand, because he already had product that was doing good without even a lot of marketing that it it would behoove him to go to people that he can have in a back-to-back -back conversation you know like really have an in-depth conversation to get the look yeah. of what he needed yeah. because five is like platforms like it are so limited on what they can do granted they do do a good job but depending on what you're looking for 
you're kind of limited. Well, I would say with fiber, you have to already be very clear on yeah. what you want it to look like. And while Marcus has a feeling of what he wants it to look like, I don't think you have a very clear, like, this is exactly what I want A, B, and C to look like. So having people who can take your feelings and turn it into something really nice. Um, so my assistant was able to find him a black-owned um, uh, branding business yeah. to do his rebranding, which is great. And y'all, that stuff does not come cheap. It ain't. It, it does not come cheap. So um, we just want to make it so that like, as he begins to add more things to the product line of um, man shit and her shit, that it's an easier through line for him to create because that would suck for him to start adding stuff and then having to rebrand all of it yeah. where he can already have like a feeling going, a nicer brand going. And, and then it's also going to help with him marketing because he'll have a strong look yeah. already. Yeah, so that's got you feeling good. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that's happening with men shit. Yeah. Y'all see how she took them five words I said and stretched it into eight paragraphs? <laughs> you didn't want it? You didn't want that? No, it's all good. I mean, it's a podcast, so we got to talk. Is. It's, it's, no, I wasn't knocking you. I was just saying that's what you was doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, dang. I didn't see? knock you, but I, did I knock you? No, nah, but you hinted to it. Go ahead. What's got you Listen, feeling good? And so if I if you saying yeah, I hinted, you don't say you you're not saying you hinted? Huh? Would pot you go ahead calling the kettle yeah, and the that's kettle exactly calling the two, pot. These two black asses sitting up in here. Uh huh. This heat. This is oh, y'all see him. Y'all see what he doing. What's got me feeling good is I feel like I don't know if it's a light at the end of the tunnel. Or if it's a path clearing its way in the forest. It's one of... No, it's a path clearing its way in the forest. I don't think it's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not like I feel like, oh my God, I'm about to reach the thing that I've always said I wanted to do. I feel like a path is starting to be cleared for me to move full steam ahead in. Uh -huh. um, and it's scary in one end. It's a lot in another end. It's a whole lot that I'm putting on my plate. I am having to trust people in ways. What's so crazy, I had a meeting recently with a production company. And I was like, I have been a one-man show for such a long time. Not because I wanted to, but because I had no choice. Now that I'm at the place that I am, you know, making enough money via my brand as far as the ads that I bring in and brand deals and even with Patreon... I'm able to now start hiring people to help me, but it's now a little frightening because I am so used used to being the the mind that thinks of it and then the the hands that execute it. So giving someone any portion of that is now a little scary. Mm -hmm. Even though I did, it wasn't that I ever wanted to be all of the things. I do want to be able to collaborate, but I think also maybe because I've done so many collaborations that have not been the way I wanted them to be, uh -huh. that it makes me a little scared to be like, okay, you all want to have a say? Huh? You want to do what? I've, 11 years, I have not had anybody have a say. Not because I wanted nobody to have a say, because I could not afford for someone to have yeah. a say. But now you can afford it, and you, you're reluctant on releasing yes. that power to other people. Yes, it's very difficult. It's very difficult, but it's great. Uh, it's, it's great in one end that I'm at this place, like I said, that I can start moving forward, but it sucks on another end. It doesn't suck. It's weird on another end to be trying to figure out how to give over some of the, I don't know if it's power, say so. I mean, still the buck responsibility. Still, it's just handing over some responsibility, so you're not handling it. It's not just. It's not. I don't know if it's just responsibility though, because in some of that, I'm giving people some creative license, and in some things, I have no problem being like, just do it, and however it turns out, I'll be all right with it. For instance, the mukbang that y'all yelled at me about. I gave that over to the editor and said, let me take my hands off and move to my next thing. 
And then when it wasn't edited the length that people thought it should be, everybody came yelling down in my throat. And I I'm think like, even if it was you editing, though, you would have had it that short with that same mentality of videos on YouTube should only be X long. And what's crazy is that Melissa finally had to co-sign because she pulled her analytics and she said, now people are asking me for longer videos, but they're only watching two, 22 minutes. Hmm. So it's just like, why am I worried about making an hour long video if only 22 minutes is being watched? This was being watched. <laughs> I'm just saying. So it is, it's hard and it's very, and it's very frustrating. Um, next time I don't care what Kevin says. I don't care what you co signing <laughs> Whatever the hell I decide to do is what it's going to be. I don't care what people say in the comments. If I let my editor edit a video down to 15 minutes, that's what people are getting. A 15 minute goddamn on video. Um, because. But you would have, would you, did you agree with the 15 or 20 minute video? I thought it looked great. Okay. I thought it looked excellent. Again, I have to realize that I now have a new audience that is used to long format. Mm. My audience that has been with me for a very long time, they have been a get 15 minutes and you didn't got you didn't went up a little overboard now, lady. Calm it down. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but again, your material is different too. Now. Yes, yes, it's it's more collaborative. So the more collaborative something is, the more people can usually take, the more they can stand. Just like if I did this podcast by myself, if I was doing a podcast by myself. 20 minutes is all I would give it. I would not... Like, that's why my lives are now shorter. They used to be an hour long, but now they're shorter. But I understand we're in a different... We're diff we're in a different time. We're in a time of quarantine where people have more time to dedicate to just listening to something. Yeah. You know, so I get that. I do get that. But that brings me back to my point of trying to give over power, and then when I do, it be... Now, why'd you let that happen? You supposed to tell that bit that bit that bit. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, guess what? Everybody can shut the up. <laughs> this is what I did. Sorry if you're not excited about it, but you got something. But yeah, I'm excited that the, cl the path is being cleared and that I'm moving forward. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. What's so funny, you guys, you all can't see this, even if you're watching this on YouTube. My husband has the comments of our Patreon members scrolling up on his phone. And he always talks about iPhones being so whack and so stupid. Yeah. But his phone, every single podcast decides, I want to do something different. It's just pulling over the Samsung version of Big of uh, Siri. But why? Did we say something to it? Possibly. Mm-hmm. You see, my Very chick. Possible. My chick is like you didn't ask for that me. That chick don't work. She do. No, she don't. Now I don't know if she work on my new Trashy phone. Trashy Siri. It's just your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. But I'm excited to jump into our next topic because it's very, um, uh, what's the word, relevant to today. And we should have shot this months ago, but I think we can still do it now, even though we're like. We're not in the moment anymore. I think we can still talk on it. Mm -hmm. But before we do, I want to jump into our next sponsor, Every Plate. What's who, up, Every Plate? Every Plate has been a great sponsor of Is This Going to Cause an Argument? Um, they've been friends of ours for a while. So we're excited to tell our new listeners and our old listeners about them again. So what's so great about Every Plate is that you are getting meals for three weeks for about two dollars and 99 cent per meal you can't you beat can't that. you can't buy your own food and cook it for that cheap it is so inexpensive which is <laughs> really where a lot of families are at right now trying to come up with solutions that are not breaking the bank so experience full plates and full of wallets with america's best value meal kit get meals you enjoy and your bank account will love delivered right to your door think of it this way one meal is the same price as one cup of coffee that's crazy cup of it 
Every plate dinners are the cheaper alternative to takeout or delivery. Listen, then you ain't going through what I went through today, okay? Amen and amen. Recipes come together in about 30 minutes, definitely faster than a trip to the grocery store or starting a meal from scratch. Every plate offers contactless delivery to your doorstep for easy home cooking on the budget. Less time deciding what to cook means more time spent enjoying good food with family. Every plate's easy-to-follow recipes and pre-portioned ingredients take the stress out of dinner time. Every plate does the meal planning, shopping, and prepping for you, taking the time-consuming guesswork out of cooking. Never buy more ingredients than you need because every plate's recipes come with everything already pre-measured. Every plate now offsets 100% of their carbon emissions. Every plate is constantly expanding their shipment zones. Check to make sure your zip code is included where they ship at checkout. Now, you guys, there's some things that I need you to know, okay? Tell when us. we got every plate this last time, I cooked up this really dope meal, right? Um, it was like chicken with some like a uh, little bit of like of a cream sauce and some vegetable and I think maybe some pasta. And Marcus was like, "This was real good." Now he didn't know I was cooking every plate. He was like, "This is real good. What made you like, cook oh, this?" You gonna pull something out the out your bag, ain't you? Okay, I see you. And yeah, he was really, and I was so mad because I couldn't claim it as well. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so good. I was able, because you all know we don't eat beef or pork, and I was able to tell uh, every plate that, and we were able to get meals that our family was loving and eating. We literally had no food to throw away. Like, even though we had, like, maybe a little leftover, that food got eaten, which is not always the case when I cook. There's a lot of food that ends up in the trash, but with every plate, it's perfect because they fix enough for for us for our family size so like the fact that even at regular price every plate is 58 percent cheaper than other major meal kits out there is just er amazing so this is what i would like for you all to do oh i would like for you all to go to everyplate.com and I want you to order, I want you to enter, excuse me, the code ARGUE3. ARGUE3. And get three weeks of every plate meals for only $2.99 per meal. Again, get three weeks of every plate meals for only $2.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code ARGUE3. ARGUE3. Thank you, every plate. I'm telling y'all, their their meals are yeah, they, they really delicious. Like for real, it's very very good. I'd be excited when they be uh, sponsoring us because I'm like, ooh, we get him some more every plate. Okay, so for those of you all who don't know or don't follow us on social media, please do. First of all, Marcus is at Marcus Ain't on the Gram and Marcus Ain't on the Book, and I am at That Chick Angel. But if you follow Marcus at Marcus Ain't on the Gram, you would have seen that his last post was of a thumbnail of us being on Black Love. Black Love on OWN, which just premiered this past Friday, September the 5th, which is um, my best friend's birthday, Beyonce, yeah. and oh, shit. my best friend um, Nina. <laughs> yeah. But the, the post confused a lot of people because everybody thought we were going to be on that episode. That was just the premiere yes. and a thumbnail that they sent us. That, so we can promote the show. Yes. So um, let's kind of. I'm gonna go through how we even ended up getting the show. So I speak on that. I'm gonna give me some water. You get some water, Over and I'll here, speak I'm on dehydrated, it. I'm dehydrated, y'all. Bless your heart. So Cody Oliver, who is the creator and director of Black Love, her husband is the other producer creator, Tommy um, Oliver. Uh, and I ended up connecting because uh, about a year or so ago, she found out she was pregnant with twin boys. She already had a two-year-old son, and she was just kind of flabbergasted at the fact that the Lord would think, hey, let me give you two boys. And so when she was just like, I don't know what to do, what should I do, yada, 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 a lot of people kept saying to her, you should talk to Angel. Angel Angel Moore, she has twin boys. You should talk to her. She actually has this uh, she has three boys. She has an older one and twins, just like you will have. And um so we had a couple of uh mutual friends. So me and her actually ended up 
connecting. So she was doing something on Facebook. My husband could not be any louder right now. If you all can't hear it, I don't know how you can't hear it, but he is so loud in the kitchen. Anyways, um, she ended up producing something for Facebook called Couch Conversations with Deval and Kadeen Ellis. And they asked us to be guests on there. So I got to meet her during her last couple of weeks of pregnancy. And that was really great. She's such a sweet spirit. She's gorgeous. And then while I was gone away out of town, she called me because she just wanted to talk a little bit. Just trying to figure out like how to approach working after having the kids and I just gave her my perspective we're both two very different individuals but you know I just wanted to be able to offer her perspective and she asked for mine so anyways um we became cool from that point she did mommy confessions with me <laughs> um which is my other podcast in Facebook watch show she was very sweet drove all the way up to my house she didn't live anywhere near me um and I had already knew about black love it seemed like something I wanted to be a part of uh, I know that's how a lot of the world were introduced to the Ellis's and then um, our then acquaintances now our friends the Fredericks was <laughs> on another season and then my uh, really good friend Alicia and Michael Beach, her husband, were on an episode. Were on last season, so I was definitely interested because I felt like, well, we have a perspective, and there was something that I felt in my own watching of Black Love was that I felt like there were so many stories that had like a. Um, I I want I don't want to judge anybody's relationship. But from my perspective, had a little bit of a like a vibe that I wouldn't want. Yeah, there. Uh, I don't know if it's what you're saying, but the ones that I saw on the, the episodes that I was seeing, there was a lot of um, magnified hills and valleys. I think I don't know if it was magnified. I think those people had really deep Low valleys. valleys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I did, but this is uh, Angel was into the show long before I knew anything about it, and I just remember every time she was watching it, I was just like, "What are you watching?" <laughs> she was like, "Oh, this is Black Love," and I'm like, "Okay," and I just I didn't know what was going on. I knew I was only catching small snippets uh -huh. of a much bigger picture, but I was just like, "That just no, like, what are you watching?" <laughs> like, I knew nothing about the show though. Yeah, and this is not to say all of the couples. I'm not. No, 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 no. Like not, I said, this I'm is just a it. small percentage of things that I saw when I walked past. And I and I will say this: it's not as if Cody and Tommy are looking for couples whose valleys have been extremely dark. It just so happens that who they have connections to sometimes in that season might have had some valleys where you just like, oh Jesus. And while that's that couple's testimony. I don't want that to be my testimony in yeah. some in some cases. So, uh, I I had all after watching a couple episodes, I was like, you know, I'd really like to do it just to show, like, a different perspective of because I felt like our marriage was different than a lot of the ones that I have been seeing. So, <laughs> um, we went to an event that Cody invited us to that was like promoting the second half of last season's Black Love and. Kevin and Melissa were on the panel along with um, DeAndre and Sally Fields. They were up there. So we went to just, you know, sit, be a part, support. Yeah. They did two events. We went to one. My friend, Siobhan, went to another one. Yeah, the event was dope. Yeah, it the event was really was nice. Really nice. Yeah. It was so nice. Super nice. Super chill. Very black. Very just like, it was just great. You felt like... Yeah, this is, yeah, this is what's what's up, you know. <laughs> Anyways, my friend Siobhan went to another event and she went up and met Cody. And she was like, um, how do you all select couples for black love? And <laughs> Siobhan she, is black as they get, by the way. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and and um, Cody was like, why do you have someone in mind? Because we are always looking for recommendations. And she was like, yes, I do. Uh, Marcus and Angel Tanksley. She goes by that chick Angel on social media. Her husband and her have a podcast. And Cody was like, yeah, we know them. She was like, oh my God. All the, all the times me and Angel spoke, I never even thought to ask if she would want to be a part. So 
you know, I'll, you know, I'll reach out because that could be that could be a good fit. So, um, legitimately, legitimately, Cody reached out right after that and was like, would you all be interested in being in, um, I think, season four of Black Love? And I was like, girl, absolutely. Like, what are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. And my girl Siobhan had already been like, ah, oh, just so you know, I put your name out there. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> the whole time all this is going on, it's like Angel mentioned it and everything. And I'm just like, I don't nobody want to talk. I'm still like, as I still am in currently, like still slightly getting my feet wet in this whole social media. And the, stepping into more of the light that Angel's already in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't nobody want to talk to me about no goddamn <laughs> relationship stuff and love. And what is this? Right. What's this foolishness she got me what into? <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I was like honored to for them to want us to be on there like it was a big deal yeah it, it was it was i don't take it lightly it's not like no that was like me a gajillion couples they do maybe right. 16 couples a season yeah and, i was like are you sure you mean this is like the extra seeds bonus season <laughs> that they doing and they was like oh we just get some extra people i was like no we, they want us to be on there would you do it i'm like yes i would do it yeah. even me being in my shell i wasn't gonna turn anything like it down so um what's great let me tell you, what's great about the process is that in order to be able to get the couples as authentically as they can, because everybody is still trying to present a polished version of themselves and people aren't trying to get into full-blown fights or, right. or be hella, hella fake, Cody and Tommy are literally the only two people that showed up. Was there one other dude? No, it was just Yeah, it was Cody and no, Tommy. No, Tommy set everything up. They were the only two in our house. We shot it back in um, it was November. It almost a year ago, yeah. Uh, November of last year. Was it November or October? It was either October or November. Yeah, it was the almost a year. The baby was really young, um, quiet, so we didn't have to have, you know, he wasn't the slum lord as of yet. He hadn't gone through his uh, property management classes as of yet, so he stayed in the room with my mom. But that also helps having just a really intimate like conversation granted it wasn't as if you know tommy and cody especially like tommy that was my first time really having a conversation with him mm -hmm. um so it wasn't as if we were like cool like that that i felt like oh yeah we can just talk to you guys about whatever because i'm still getting to know you know their yeah. personalities as well but it was still nice to just have it be a very yeah that, that was um they were very google was on one they were very they made it very easy to talk to him like yeah. even though like Tommy was behind the camera as we were sitting there going through the interview and like she would ask us questions and we would give our perspectives like Tommy would just, he would just like interject and it's like oh yeah and, like me and him would just have a full-on conversation outside of what me and Angel was already yeah. talking like they made it very natural feeling mm -hmm. which is uh which is probably what, what makes the show so good and easy and People seem so natural on cameras because it's they make it easy to do. It is very much so just a very chill conversation. And um, it's it's definitely, for us, especially since we haven't seen the season yet, it, we we got to see like a sneak peek of, of one episode that we're in. And we're barely, it's, it, I think the first episode that we're in, episode number four, we're not in it heavily. But just... No, it was very little. Um, just seeing like how they architect because they they have 16 couples that they interviewed and it's trying to like tie in the conversations from one couple into a yeah, next the couple. same topic but every couple talking about the topic in their own personal way right and trying to see how our personalities fit in to the story so me and marcus in our interview first of all we had some drinks before we started Market. Yeah, yeah no, yes. you did. No, we no, both did. We oh, both yeah, we did, did, and I was definitely feeling mine. I was good and loose. I had, all, like I said, I, I was still very much so a new mom to Amar. Um, I had a makeup artist come in, so when y'all notice that my face is beat to to the gods, it's because I paid somebody to come beat my face. I was like, y'all ain't about to have me on national TV. I was TV. skinnier when we filmed that. Uh huh. I was twenty pounds lighter. You put on 20 pounds? Yeah. Okay. I was going through some things at that time, y'all. Yeah. Like, I was, like, fighting 
Yeah, I was fighting depression during that time, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, yeah, going through quite a bit. And I didn't think about it then, but when I saw the uh, the premiere that they sent us, or the other show that they sent us, I was like, why do I look? Oh, I was no. going through some things, wasn't I? So was it harder for you to be relaxed with no. you going through all because that? Because I was, um, for the most part, it wasn't bad enough for me to, uh, for it to affect my personal life as much or, you know, as much as it could have. And I was able to step away. That's probably why I had to have them to drink, so I'd make sure I was natural, but... Yes, because um, I know you weren't in the best of mood coming home. Yeah, I wasn't in the best mood coming home. Uh, I wasn't in the best of mood at all during that time last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but like I said, doing that interview with them was definitely better. Should have called better help if I knew about them. <laughs> right. Um, so it was it was definitely like a, a thing of trying to figure out how much of these people... Yeah. How much of us are we going to give these people? Um, you know, we have our vlog, we have our YouTube channel, which is this podcast. It's very much so authentically us. The tension that you might feel between us at the very top, that's real tension. That's us. Yeah, which we are... Feeling every piece of this tension. <laughs> All y'all. <laughs> which we, while it might make some people uncomfortable to watch, because I understand some people are not used to watching or don't feel, they feel like, you know... A couple's quarrel should be something that's done behind doors. And we like either y'all going to see this or y'all ain't going to get no podcast. That's Because right. we can't do both. Because we don't get to determine when we're just like, ew. We yeah. don't get to determine that sometimes. Yeah. That's one thing we always set out. We're not going to set out to paint this whole fairy tale of, oh, we never get into arguments. We never bicker. We're never mad at each other. Kiss, smooch, smooch. Nah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Like, we don't kiss smooth, smooth. We grab and grope. <laughs> we fuss a little bit. So, yeah. And that's it. Like, it ain't... But what y'all saw, ain't, it don't get much worse than that, but... So, trying know. to figure out, like... You know, wanting to be able to give their audience as much of us as possible. Yeah. But it's also, like, it's not the most natural situation because we're we we are being interviewed we are being asked specific things that maybe we didn't know we were going to be asked nothing that felt too intrusive not yeah. past nothing was more intrusive than what we've shared already right on youtube yeah. it wasn't like i have never told anyone this marcus did drop a little little piece that i was very shocked when he did say it and i don't and i think if i were sober I would have responded differently. <laughs> um, and I hope that it made it into the second episode. Because I know it's not in the first episode that we appear in. I hope it's in the second episode. You said something. You said how you knew that I was the one. Oh. And I was just like... I had never in my life heard him speak those words. I so, thought I said it on the podcast before. Mm-mm. Honey, th those words were like... Huh. Um, you gotta get a little deep because everybody talks so philosophically on the show. <laughs> it's like that ain't us. We ain't gonna get all deep with you. Not but that much. But he did. He went one bar, one line, that bar one was, sentence. That, that bar. He deep dived. I'm telling you, you would have had to have an air regulator on because the the pressure of the water would have been too heavy. That's how He's deep silly. you went. Everybody else is like, oh, yeah, you know, you are the moon that shines on my night sky and trickles on my lake, uh, what's it called, lake water skin. Like, I don't know. It's like, they ain't talking like that. They want to know. Like, yeah, she's sexy. They, oh, you know what? No, you have said it on the podcast, I think, since then, but you had never said it on the podcast before I think I then. I said it before then. No, 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 sir. That was the first I time you said it. it. Yeah, I, just so you all know, real quick to kill this um, vibe that we have going, Marcus's phone sucks. It just no, it don't suck. Do it just, it's <laughs> listening. Unfortunately, that part sucks. <laughs> it sucks. A hey whole, Google, whole lot. stop. But let me tell you, what doesn't suck is usual wines, which brings us to our third sponsor. Y'all know we are fans. This podcast is fans of Usual Wines, and Usual Wines is a fan of ours. Um, 
I actually need to re-up on Usual Wines because their rosé is my one of my favorites and what makes it like truly like something that I feel like everyone should have is the single serving um, formula that they have with their glasses because you get a heavy pour it's about 6.3 ounces in every bottle so this is something that you one person can finish and you will feel very nice after having your usual wines so then we're pouring wine down the sink when you don't want to finish the bottle because every single serve format and bottle design um, usual wines is always fresh and no more flat bubbly or stale rosé let me tell you something about stale wine don't nobody want it it's the worst but you're also not over here trying to be a lush and drink a whole bottle of wine just so you don't have stale wine usual wines removes that burden from you they're like baby just open up this one bottle of wine do yourself right you can open up another one another day and it's still gonna be fresh yeah right that's what happens okay so let me tell you or you'd be like me and just drink Three glasses. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll just have three actual bottles of usual good. wines. Okay, it's from the AVAs in California. That's Napa, Sonoma, and Santa Barbara. And it's made with minimal interventions. Zero sugar, zero additives. It's low carb, zero grams of sugar. They have the red blend, a rosé, and sparkling wine called Brut. Okay? And um, the in the summer, What's they... The Brut. Okay. Brut. Okay. All right. Um, so, there's no more sugar, right? Now, in the U.S., they be letting people put all types of stuff in wine. There's over 60 additives that people can actually legally put in wine that winemakers use. But usual wine is not about that life, okay? Not about it. They don't use any chemical chemicals or sugar additives to enhance the flavors or the stability of the wine. They are truly a clean wine brand. Um, and the way they actually ferment their wine is that they completely ferment out all the sugar of the wine. So that the sugar goes out and the alcohol stays. It comes on in, okay? And that way you get the driest, crispest wine with no sugar, okay? Because a lot of wines, they be leaving all their sugar and they purposefully stop the fermentation so you got more sugar. Mm -hmm. And we, listen, just give me a good wine. I don't need sugar. I'm not drinking Kool-Aid. I'm drinking wine. I'm grown. Yeah, you are. Give me the wine. You want the wine? Yes. Okay, that's what I'm here for. And I don't need all the calories. Because need... what, what's where they going to go? Mm. <clears throat> I don't need it. Hey. I don't need it. <laughs> but what you do need is to go to their website at www.usualwines.com and use our promo code ARGUE for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Again, go to their website, www.usualwines.com and use our promo code ARGUE for $8 off your first order. Thank you so much, Usual Wines. We're huge fans of you all, and we're glad you're fans of us. Go ahead and check them out. Check them out, y'all. Usual mm -hmm. Wines. So, Marcus, um, I felt like, really showed and proved. He was really, you were really on your game for... You know, I show up when I need to. You know, I'm here at the podcast with the family, you know. <laughs> No, but for Black Love, I felt like you were really on your game, and I feel like you really articulated what marriage and what our marriage meant mm -hmm. to you. Which, not to say that I doubted that you would, but it was nice to hear you articulate it. Because, as you all know, Marcus is a man of few words. I am. Not that However, he, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, not that he doesn't compliment me. On the last podcast, he gave me my flowers verbally, and I yeah. very much so Second appreciate it. Second time this year. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um... No, but I didn't take that lightly, the fact that they asked us to be on the show. I was like, I ain't going to sit there and, and be no rock. Um, other than the rock that Angel needs for support. Now, uh, <laughs> now I wasn't going to sit there, you know, and just, you know, let her carry it like they asked us to be on the show for black love so it was like angel representing you know the her side of this team and then me representing the other side of the team and us coming together and hopefully giving them something that they want yeah it um i definitely didn't know how marcus was going to be i never know he's a uh 
He's a bit of a, a toss of a coin. Just depends. But here lately, when we've done stuff with other people, you have been completely locked and loaded in. I'm always locked and loaded. I have been for a long time now. Don't say lately. I've been doing this for 11 years. All right. So, I mean lately in regards to that. Well, the past two years, I've been straight. Yeah, that's... All right, then. That ain't lately. In regards don't live to in the past. 11 years. Don't, don't, like... don't, don't live in the past. Oh, my All right, God. that's your problem. That's your upper limit problem right there. <laughs> you, how much of the book Upper limit problem. Brought to you by... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how much have you read? You just heard us say that enough times that you just like, let no, me go at a I've read enough. That's don't, what don't, I asked. Don't how judge much, me. I said, how don't much? Don't worry you? about it. <laughs> worry about me and my journey. See... Marcus loves. This is what I know he'll show up to do. He'll show up to just talk crazy. But sometimes I don't know if he's going to show up to talk what I know. Like a lot of people don't see what I see in him because he doesn't show it to them. So I never know if you're going to show it to other people. So that's what I just mean. Just know that you never know that's what's what going to happen. Said. All right, that's, then. You that's just know I that. Said. I said that's what I know. Good. Why is that good? <laughs> Why is that? Make you know everything. That's your Why problem. Why is that good? But I will say, looking back on it, I have no idea what we're going to look like. To be honest, looking back on what we said no. during that interview, I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, because you have no idea how they're going to add it together, what they're going to use, what they're not going to use. Mm. I'm like, I don't know if people are going to watch us and be like, they ain't going to make it. Yeah. They're not going to make it. There's no way they're going to make it. I will say, like, there have been couples when I have watched in previous seasons that I'm just like, hmm, I don't know. How's that going to work long term? And some of those couples definitely got divorced. Not to not to put any judgment. I just, me personally, was like, how does that work? Seeing the turmoil. It was just like, I was like, I don't know how anybody has the... Um, Excuse me again, burp number two has the... No, nah, that was three. Somebody's keeping count. Okay, thank you. I was like, I don't... It, some things take a lot of energy to be able to keep together. And um, what I will say about our marriage, not trying to toot our horn, is that I don't think it takes a whole... Now we're at a place that it doesn't take a whole, whole lot of energy to keep the marriage functioning. And there were some where I was just like, whoo, that seemed like a lot of energy. Like, eventually... Unless it becomes easier, that's gonna take a it's yeah. gonna take a toll trying to keep that keep that up. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. And you never know I mean, depending on what topics are brought up, it could be like something brought up that hits a nerve that mm -hmm. they're still working through. But everything else may be a hundred percent great. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have that one lump and then if that's what they're talking about, that's what's highlighted. And right. it's just like, oh, they ain't doing too good. When actually, I know they're actually doing great. It's just that one, that one thing, that one yeah. little hiccup. And then again, that one hiccup could be the, be the straw, but yeah. hopefully not. So I don't know. Like, we talked a little bit about. Our, I don't honestly don't remember everything we talked about. I feel like the only thing we talked about that was through a lens of like a gray lens, where it's just like, uh was with our one patch in our marriage where we we jointly were not connecting. I think uh -huh. we talk, uh where it was more like we were roommates than we were oh, yeah, yeah, a yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah. It was just like we lived together yeah. and we functioned together, but it didn't feel like we were like and That was that was the was it the apartment? No, that was the house. The house, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was definitely the house. And then we also um we talked about a lot about me in my independence in trying to juggle showing him appreciation but also not yeah, losing yeah. myself and not feeling like my independence was valued or valuable because um that's something that black women get picked on about all the time is y'all y'all think y'all can do yeah. everything that's why that's it's, why no, nobody want to bury you because you think you know it all and yeah, you think the, you could do yeah, it and that's not it they don't think they can do it all they just, they've had to for so long right so we can it's just like i ain't gonna just <laughs> hand this over for, to somebody and i guess it may feel like in a uh, place of weakness Mm -hmm. as what it may be or that's how they may take it of, or feeling like no i, I can't i've been doing this for this long 
And if they have the right partners, relinquishing that as, oh, I don't need to carry all this by myself anymore. Right. You are here. You are my partner. You're here to take here to take some of this off of me, not me being a damsel in distress. So yes, exactly. Because I was just like, I can't play that role. It's not even in me. But me juggling that as well as trying to figure out or recognizing that I was at fault for not showing appreciation for the stuff that he was doing. So, um, like, we talked about that. And I thought that was a good conversation to have because I do feel like, in particular, when it comes to black love, not that that is a problem everybody has, but I feel like it's common for enough people because of the story, especially of black women in America, in mm -hmm. having a lot of black women having to be, mm -hmm. take on more roles than what most women would have to, trying to like um, switch gears once a man comes into your life or your spouse comes into your life and figuring out like, what are you going to take yeah. over and how do I actually show you gratitude and also not feel like I'm being told that what I was capable of doing is now no longer valuable. Yeah. Um, and it can be a little bit of a, a wonky walk at the beginning, but I feel like we've gotten to a better place at that. And we still have, uh, speaking of which, and then we'll close it out, Marcus brought up the printer yesterday. Even that was like a little bit of a, in a different sense, a bit of a, 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 a dance yeah. of... You know, Marcus wanting to be able to figure out something that he wasn't necessarily coming into this relationship with on the stronger end. He came into relationship on the stronger end with anything mechanical, engineering, hands-on, better than I am. By far, I'm capable. He's way better. <laughs> than when it came. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the analogy we gave is like, Angel can get it done. But it may be dangerous. It may not be right. But it's going to get done. It's going to get done. <laughs> I.e. this podcast. Where Marcus on the other end with technology. I have a head start uh, from just being around technology a lot longer than he has been. And understanding just a little more technical language when it comes to computers. And when it comes to things that deal with computers and that stuff. Not so, even a little more. A lot more. Like... And I already know that, but um, like setting up this printer is like, all right, what is going on? I, in every way, had a, a was knew I was gonna come to a point where I was gonna be like, Angel, help me out with this, but I don't want to just give it up and say, here, do this for me. I'm like, no, let me figure out all these avenues. And the whole time, Angel sees me struggling. She'd be like, you want me help? No, yeah. not yet. I, this, I, let me do this first. I have to keep saying, let <laughs> me know if you want me to tap it. Yeah. Let me. She still ain't learning. Just let me struggle, and then I'm gonna be like, "Hey, would you help me out with this?" No, this is the reason why I will never learn that. It's because the longer Marcus struggles, the more frustrated he gets, and he doesn't know that his frustration about the machine bleeds off into how he treats everybody else. In well, the quit house. being soft. So <laughs> as I was sitting there, and finally I was like, "All right, <laughs> all right, here." Yeah, figure this out for me, whatever. And she figured, like, with the, both of us working at it, it took, like, another five or ten minutes and got it up and going. But uh, that's one of the things I brought up when we were filming, um, who were we talking, uh, the Bottom of the Beautiful. Um, we were talking about the, what's the show? Uh, Married at uh, First Married Sight. Married at First Sight. And one of the, uh, I was just going down. I don't read every single comment. I was just scrolling down looking. And I saw one guy commented and said, um, when does the man when it, when does the man get to step up and be the head of house uh but be head of the house and i was like i responded to him i was like this is depending on the audience this can be a loaded question however a good leader uh, in any realm it, it needs to be able to recognize strength and weaknesses mm -hmm. like just because you're leading the group and then i said it has nothing to do with calling the shots mm -hmm. like it has nothing to do with the man calling the shots or the woman calling the shots if you are a leader, if you feel like you're head of head of house, you need to understand what your wife or your partner's weaknesses are and strengths and what yours are as well, your strengths mm -hmm. and also your weaknesses yeah. and knowing when to let that person take lead on specific things. Yeah. And that's what that's what that's all about. It's not like, oh, I'm running this, I'm doing this and doing that. No. It's a partnership. 
you come to that together and it's not about when people say head of house i think uh, people that aren't married um especially older i can say older men men my age that aren't married have a completely different um if they never looked at marriage or whatever if they never studied like the realm of relationship are kind of skewed on that perception of being the head of house or the man running his house or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so for me i had to in that sense allow him to fail in front of me multiple times without taking that away from him like i i i have to as his wife let him be comfortable failing in front of me without me jumping in to save him as if he is not a goddamn good yeah. man because i knew i knew i was failing i was like <laughs> i still want to that's just me like my uh, uh curious mind that's the how that's the way i figure things out and just like how did you know how to do that when i'm doing something else like have you ever done that before no Mm-hmm. What did you do? I've done it wrong a, a bunch of times within the past four hours to where I finally done it the right way, and here we are, and there's up and running, uh, not the printer, but like other things. Yeah. Um, and that's just part of being a hands-on, quote unquote, mechanic. Yeah, and that's how type of person that I am. So mm-hmm. even in that, I see it as a challenge, and I'm just like, no, let me try to figure this out. But Mark, hey. I Let me do this. Me, I mean, <laughs> you, but Marcus, don't do that. No, no, I'm, I, that's just like an example. It's okay. like you sitting there, it's like, you're supposed to press that red button. It says press that button, and I don't see the button yet. And I'm like, ah, let me figure this out now. Go on. <laughs> and then I finally, like, 10 minutes, like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to press this. <laughs> that is so weird. But that's just me. I see it as a challenge, and it's it's fun. It's in. I'm like, nah, let me figure this out. And when you're having fun, I don't, I don't mind. But when I see you getting ramped up, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> let me, please, dear God, just let me. I just be praying. God, let him... Go ahead and say, Angel, just figure this out. Um, but yeah, it is that can be a task and a half, especially also being a mom. And, re- and I know I'm not his mom. I don't want to be his mom. But um, making sure, I, like I said, just allowing him to be comfortable to fail in front of me as many times as he needs to. Um, and then hoping that at some point in time, if he knows that's my strength, allowing me to either do it or show him how to do it um which is what i sometimes have to ask of him is like i know there are certain things obviously he does better than me but sometimes i just want him to show me or tell me actually how to do it with the gun a lot of times he wants to take it from me when he's working with me on it and i'm like no 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 talk me through it so that i can feel how to do it so that the next time like the last time i was like no no Because he'd be like, let me let me just take it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't take it out of my hands. Tell me, show me right now while it's in my hand how I'm doing it wrong. And once he realized that that was the better concept for me, because I don't I don't like to be, little, be belittled. I don't like to be patronized. And not that I thought that that's what he was doing, but it still felt like a slight. And I'm just be like, just show me so that I can, my body can memorize this. And then I can do it the way you're telling me how to do it. So... It is a, um, like I said, it's a dance. It, it is like the tango. It is like one of the fastest moving, like you're going to step on somebody's toes if you don't know what where your foot is supposed to go. <laughs> but it's one that we are definitely practicing. And I think that in a lot of marriages, some people are really good at falling in whatever role it is. But in a marriage where you have a woman that has been raised by only another woman and a man that was raised by a man and a woman and a man man and uncles and brothers it is like okay now how do we make both of this work because we both came in here we both came in here with a lot of pluses so how do we allow all of these like positive things yeah i remember uh and i do know men that feel this way but um we were talking about i think i don't know if it was a twin yeah it was the twins and we're talking about, Angel was talking about how she put the furniture together, like the cribs and stuff together, when the twins, mm-hmm. uh, or whatever. And I, I don't know if we were talking about on the podcast. Yeah, I think somebody said, uh, Marcus, I wonder how that makes Marcus feel, knowing that his wife is like putting the baby furniture together or whatever. But I do know men that would be, feel uh, a certain way about that. But I'm like, I don't, my wife putting furniture together it's gonna take a whole lot more of that than that to like emasculate me. Like, mm-hmm. 
Like, I don't need that type of stuff to solidify my manhood. Like, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, if she's capable of doing it, especially if she didn't ask me two, three times, and yeah, <laughs> go ahead and do it. <laughs> like, and listen, I can't be a man where that is what emasculates him, or he will have no balls yeah. after about a month of dealing with me. I'm and like, I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm like, I that's it. Yeah, I, I do know men that would feel some type of way, especially if they can't do it either, and they like, wife, I don't know, hired somebody to do it. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, yeah, no, but, I can't. I'm not that. I know I'm not that woman, and I wouldn't be able, no, not knocking a man like that, that type of man in myself, my personality just wouldn't go well. And there are women who know how to work in that type of relationship. I just don't know how to. Okay, so I think maybe I, I really feel like we should do an, an episode on tox, toxic masculinity. I think that I know you don't seem to care want to do that, but I think that would be a good conversation. Cause, do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Y'all let us know in the comments. A, a whole podcast on toxic masculinity and like just um, I don't know if it's it's kind of the battle of the sexes. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Um, you guys, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I hope you all check out Black Love on OWN. It comes out on Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Marcus and I will be showing up in the fourth episode. But please enjoy all the episodes prior to us and after us because Absolutely. it is a wonderful, wonderful series. Again, we thank Tommy and Cody yes. Oliver for allowing us to be a part. Um, it's really, it's special for us and we, uh, it's been one of the highlights. It will, it's about to be one of the highlights of 2020 for us. So yay. And a special thank you to our three sponsors, better help every plate and usual wines for sponsoring this. Appreciate podcast. that, man. Um, they Absolutely. Are, they are the reason why I'm able to have someone edit this so that I can deal with, um, the landlord who is over here about to make all the noise um and a special thank you to our patreon watching live we love you guys thank you so much for being a part of the conversation if you would like to be a part of our patreon please go to www.patreon.com forward slash that chick angel for the low low five dollars a month that is 16 cent a day you get some exclusive content early content and live content come on yeah. come on over and support us i think that's it um we'll talk to y'all on wednesday of a uh, no, sorry. This will go up on Wednesday. We'll talk to you all next week. Yes. Uh, is that it? Is that all? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> all right. We will talk to y'all later. Oh, what am I doing? Make sure y'all check out Get Some Man Shit. M-A-N-S-H-Y-T. That is my 100% all-natural beard and body butter that I make myself. I use it. It's a great product. Give it out. From what I... Uh, um, what do they call it? testimonies? I'm getting back. Women are using it for their skin and facial creams, and men are using it. It makes your beard soft, it makes your skin soft. I got women, her shit coming out. Um, women, her shit coming out soon. Uh, working on that right now. That's gonna probably roll out with my branding and all that stuff once that switches over, hopefully. Uh, make sure y'all check it out. Again, that's uh, manshit.com. That's M A N S H Y T. All right, thank you guys. Earlier. I know the baby's about to lose <laughs> it. We'll mind, talk y'all. to you all later. Y'all be blessed. All right, family. Y'all have a good one. Bye. That chick angel.